In this video, I'm going to look at analog and digital signals and their amplification. Fundamental to the operation of a computer is the transistor. Now, the transistor can do two main things. It can amplify signals, that means make them bigger, and it can also act as a switch. Let's consider its amplifying ability first of all. Well, here you can see I have a schematic diagram representing an amplifier and we know the amplifier will have a signal in. Now a typical signal will be somebody's voice and this shape here is showing an envelope of somebody speaking and what will happen is this will be picked up by a microphone and you might want it to sound louder when it's played back. So what you can do, you can look to the signal out from the amplifier and you will see the pattern, the envelope of the voice appearing at the output and you can see it is much bigger. So we are clear, this input here is an electrical signal and the human being would have spoken into a microphone and the microphone would have changed the air pressure that's been produced by the voice of the individual into an electrical signal. This electrical signal is then the input to the amplifier and what you get out is another electrical signal that has the same envelope shape, but it's much bigger. And of course, this now can be sent off to a speaker and the voice of the human being would be louder and you can turn up the amplification if you so wish. So what you're looking at here is an amplifier that has transistors that takes an electrical signal in and produces a bigger electrical signal at the output. Let's consider a certain point in time on the input signal and I will point to it and you can see the height of that signal at a certain instance of time. If I go forward in time to a little bit further we can see the signal has gone up to here. Now think about the distance that that arrow has travelled through and let's now look at the same place on the output signal which is bigger and I'm pointing to it here. Now, if I say, what do I have when I go forward a fraction in time, then I end up pointing to this position here. So you can see that that arrow has moved through a bigger distance. That's because the amplitude of the output signal is bigger than the input signal. So let's now mark these points on the input and the output signal. And you can see here I have the input. And if you look at the distance the signal has traveled, you can see it's traveled up and down that amount shown by the arrow. If we look at the output signal at the same point, we can see that the magnitude is bigger. Now that is telling us that the output signal has a bigger overall amplitude at every point than the input signal because the amplifier has boosted the level of the input signal to the higher level in the output. So we can see that the output has a greater amplitude than the input at every point along the signal. Now if you consider both of these signals, the input and the output signal, they're examples of analog signals. And that's because as time goes on, as the signal is being produced, it is going to differing amplitudes. So when you consider the signals you see at the input and output, these analog signals are things you would typically get from somebody speaking, from somebody singing, playing a musical instrument. You would get this kind of waveform being produced, analog signals in other words. And in general, the physical world as we move around it, you're hearing sounds which are all analog in nature. Let's take a closer look at an analog signal and let's consider it against time as represented diagrammatically by this arrow. And I'm going to choose a point in time and look at the amplitude of the signal. And you can see an example is shown here. If I go further on in time, I can see that the amplitude is getting bigger. If I go on in time again, I can see the amplitude is getting bigger again. And then if I come here further on in time, you can see the amplitude is reduced. I'll just show one more. As I go on in time, you can see the amplitude of the signal has reduced again. Let's now consider a digital signal, as you can see here. And let's compare that against time as illustrated by this arrow. Now if I consider the amplitude of this signal I can see 
there's an amplitude here and if i look at the next level you can see it is here where's the level that's coming next as i go on further in time and you can see it is here and then again as i go on in time you can see it is here so you can see with this signal it's going from a high to a low signal with nothing in between now that's because a digital signal as time goes on exhibits one of two levels a high level and a low level compare that to the analog signal whose amplitude frequently changes to differing levels how many different levels are there in an analog signal well the answer is lots and lots and theoretically an infinite number of levels exist in an analog signal whereas a digital signal only has two theoretically this idea of it jumping from high to low is in infinitesimally small amount of time but in reality there's a bit of a slope there but we can forget that because this is an idealized representation of a square wave and it is what we see in a computer it almost looks like this and as electronics improves it gets more and more squared up as you can see in this illustration here if we consider these waveforms the one on the left as you look at the screen is actually an example of the analog waveform and the one on the right is an example of a digital waveform now there's a clear difference when you look at the diagrams of these waveforms you can see that the analog has numerous levels of amplitude whereas the digital one only has two levels of amplitude a high and a low now when you see diagrams of analog and digital signals it's usual to have another axis shown and that is the amplitude axis so you would typically see in textbooks this kind of diagram here where time is marked off and amplitude as well and you can see that for the analog signal there's lots of different levels of amplitude whereas with the digital there's just the two levels of amplitude a high and a low let's return to the amplifier and look at it with respect to digital signals we know we're going to have a signal going in and this signal can be a digital signal as you see here and what the amplifier will do is produce a signal out and this signal will be the digital signal but much bigger it'll have a bigger amplitude so the digital signal gets amplified just as the analog signal did as digital signals move around a computer and the computer network they will lose energy consequently they will have to be amplified at various points in a computer network so amplifiers are not just used with analog signals they are also used with digital signals if you look at the analog signal the one on the left as you're looking at the screen and watch time going along you can see that there is a continual change in the amplitude of the signal so we can say that analog signals are continuous in their amplitude they continually change now turn your attention to the digital signal that's shown on the right as you're looking at the screen now in the case of a digital signal there is no continuous change in amplitude it jumps from a high level to a low level or a low level to a high level it has discrete stages it's not continuous so it's often referred to as a discrete signal and it's a discrete signal that has two levels a high and a low and it is often talked about as being a two-state signal a high and a low Please consider subscribing to the channel and click the bell to ensure you get an update every time I upload a video. Maybe you would like to consider supporting the development of these free videos via Patreon. In addition, why not follow me on Twitter and also check out the supporting website.